Hi, this is Pat Bruff from Fink and Paris Insurance Agency. Welcome to our podcast, Local and Mighty, the podcast about Massachusetts personal and commercial insurance mixed in with a little bit of fun. Hello and welcome to the latest of the Fink and Paris podcast, Local and Mighty, and actually the first one of 2024. And today I have a very special guest with me, and it is one of our personal lines account managers, Sam Mason. Hi, Pat. Hey, Sam. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. So uh, oddly, if you're a a faithful listener of the podcast, you will know that uh, this is the first one this year. And we may have only had one last year. Shame, shame. I know, just a little bit of shame. <laughs> uh, but uh, the goal is to get all the equipment back up and running, and we have plenty to talk about it this year. And I think we we have more than a few subjects already in the in the lineup. Uh, so you're going to be hearing a lot more from me and lots of our guests, including Sam. So Sam, uh, you are uh, you were uh, so excited when I asked that you join me. I was so excited. So excited. Please, I don't know if you can feel the, the excitement. In my voice. <laughs> yeah. And uh but anyway, so Sam, tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me uh who who Sam Mason is and and how you ended up here. Yeah. So I grew up in East Hampton, born and raised. I went to East Hampton High School. I went to Westfield State and got a bachelor's in business management. I also ended up doing some aviation management stuff there and I received a uh, commercial pilot's license. Wait, you can fly? I can. Like yeah. literally, you yeah. can get in a plane. Like like, if we in were... a plane, I can't fly myself. But, okay, you know. <laughs> but if there was like a situation where the pilot was hurt and they said, is there a pilot on the plane? I you would, mean, you I've could... never flown a 737, but yeah, I could you probably could figure, figure it out. out. <laughs> All right, good to know. Good to know. This is very good to know. Yeah. Um, so I ended up at Fink in Paris because actually my mom's friend, Melissa, works here and she recruited me. So yeah, I ended up here about three years ago, and I've uh, been a full eight years of insurance so far. But uh, I'm really loving it here at Fink and Paris. I, I think this is my place to stay. I think you're right, because I think we love you a lot here, <laughs> oh, actually. <thanks. laughs> so uh, you're uh, one of eight personal lines account managers that we have between the two offices. So for those that don't know, those who have, have never come into the office or no, had to you know, talk to anybody here, what, what exactly is a personal lines account manager? Yeah, so we do everything from helping set up new customers to servicing and taking care of the account after you become a customer. So we'll start off by collecting information from, you know, like your new for a new home, new auto, snowmobile, trailer, camper, any kind of personal line thing like that. Um, And then after the policy is written, we'll help answer any policy questions on a day to day basis. We'll help you with any billing questions. Uh, make any changes to your policy. So if you have things like an, a new address, new vehicle, adding coverage for new jewelry, all those types of things we handle. So you're really the long-term partner. Like you're, you know, we, we joke or, you know, we see commercials on TV for those big, you know, weird companies that have funny commercial. I mean, they are kind of funny, but uh, but you're generally talking to who knows who when, when you call there, but as a personal lines account manager, so we have everything as a split here. And when we say a split, meaning everyone has a certain part of the alphabet, at least at the moment. Correct. Uh, so if I'm letter B and I call in and Sam is taking care of that part of the alphabet, which I always am confused as to who is taking <laughs> care of yeah, the you alphabet. I always have to ask who I who always have to ask. <laughs> Uh, but you would be the person that I would I would generally talk to unless you're away or on vacation or whatever the case may be. Correct. So that that's kind of the goal, or that's what the that's what the account manager does. It's it's your everyday day to day person, local person lives here, works here in the building uh, that you'll talk to. You know, we do we do work with um, one carrier that we kind of have do some things for us uh, on a call basis. Um, but but nine times out of ten, you're going to talk to you. Yeah, absolutely. Great. And so you get to build a reputation or, or um, a relationship with the customers. Yeah, it's nice. You know, I'll learn about your your kids, your dogs, your, you know, your trips that you're taking. And, and, and I enjoy that. I enjoy learning about my customers and sharing those experiences with them. Exactly. So what about um, a claim? So what, what happens if, uh, if I call and I, I want to talk to you about a claim? So while I hope you never have one, of course, if you do, (laughs) if you do, uh, we do have somebody in our office named Tanya, who is a claims coordinator. She is uh, kind of the uh, person who will handle everything from, you know, filing the claim to helping you through it if you have some questions. 
if she's ever out, maybe she's on vacation or she's feeling a little sick that day, uh, the account manager will also be able to step in and, you know, be Tanya for the day, if if you will. And uh, we'll get you through it. Yeah. Great. So, it, you know, the the uh, personal lines account manager position is is, uh, you know, you're you're the go to person here in the office uh, when I need when I need help with just about anything unless it's claimed that it's Tanya. So. So the the reason I got you in here is over the last <laughs> six months to a year, things have, have been a little crazy for the account managers. Well, little, for all of us, crazy. I think. Yeah, yeah. Just, just a little. <laughs> so what do you think? Uh, what do you think the, the number one factor is that, uh, especially over the last uh, few months uh, that people are talking to us about? 110% the rates. The, the rates. rates going up. Yeah, exactly. It is. So if you remember, um, the last podcast we did was back in March, March of 2023. And uh, Jen, uh, the owner of the agency, we had talked about doing a podcast at that time, and we talked about rates. And one of the things that we said was, hey, listen, the the rates are, they're going to go up. And while everyone was still kind of talking about, uh, you know, pick your coverage and you'll, you know, pay what you get what you pay for or whatever, <laughs> get what you pay for, literally. Um we decided to do something that said, listen, hey, your rates are going up. Uh, we're not going to hide behind that. Yeah. We know it's going up. It's it's going to continue to go up because of lots of different reasons. Um, and so that that podcast kind of covered, uh, you know, what are, what's going to happen in 2024 and, or, or should, I should say 2023. And sure enough, all of those things happened. Yeah, they <laughs> the happened rates. and then some. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so it, it made us, uh, it, 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 it turned us around to, we should, you know, try and do an, a kind of a follow-up podcast to start off 2024. And so that's where we're here. That's why we're here today. And so it's, it's crazy to see and, and hear people that have worked in the industry that have been here for 20, 30, 40 years, people here in the building, uh, they're all saying the same thing, that this is the worst they've ever seen it. Uh, it's not unusual unusual for us to see rate increases of 10, 15, 20, and even 40%, right? I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I've only been doing it eight years, but it's I've never seen anything like this. Yeah, and and, and we hope it <laughs> we hope it eventually uh, stops. But you know, there are just a lot of reasons. You know, it, it's kind of the same reasons we talked about back when we did the podcast in 2023. There, the pandemic really kind of changed everything. Uh, there are not as many people, you know, in 2020 and 2021, there was not as many people on the roads. Uh, so claims were way down. So yeah. carriers were like, Hey, well, we're going to we'll give you some benefits. We'll, we'll give you some discounts. Right, you know, try right. to help you guys out. Exactly. Exactly. Low mileage. And so everything was, uh, while in the world, not exactly great on the roads, it was, it was okay. Cause yeah. it wasn't a lot of cars coming, you know, some, a lot of things going on with cars. But then, uh, as we started to climb out of that 2022, 2023, Everyone said, "Hey, let's let's go buy a new car." Yeah, <laughs> and I, and I feel like so many people were like, "Oh gosh, we've been cooped up for three years. Let's let's get out on the road." Exactly, exactly. And so all the issues that forever have been been issues as far as why rates go up as far as auto. You know, one of the things that is distracted driving. I mean, it continues to be a, a big deal. And it's not just you know your cell phone in your hand either it's eating your breakfast on your way to work because yep. you didn't get up early enough or what? you know or <laughs> we don't do that yeah. uh you know or even just you drop something and you go to try to pick it up and you take your eye off the road for just a split second you try to change the volume on your on your radio you right. know any of those things are distracting you right exactly and so those things continue to cause you know accidents um the increase in technology and new vehicles is continuing to drive up the cost. So in the old days, uh, I shouldn't say the old days, but, you know, even 10 years ago, if you got in an accident with somebody, you got a fender bender and, you know, you you bumped into somebody and you were like, oh, that's not a big deal. It's like, you know, I dented in this little panel in the front of my, my car. I'm looking at a car outside. <laughs> so, you know, you've dented this little thing. Then you bring it to the shop and you realize, hey, there's like, three sensors in there that mm -hmm. say that you're too close to the curb or you're too close to the car or whatever. Yeah. And now those sensors have to be replaced. You can't just put a new thousand dollar bumper on there. Now right. it's a $2,500 bumper. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's no longer just a hunk of metal that's going on the car. It's, you know, right. A lot more involved. Right. And, and so the rise, you know, there's, there's still some supply chain issues. There's still some things that are, you know, that are taking forever to get. And then, then it, 
the other thing that we're running to, and, and we'll have uh, Tanya in here at, at <laughs> some point to talk about claims, like claims are now taking, and I, and I don't mean claims from our end as far as getting the process going, but I mean as far as getting cars fixed. Yeah, from beginning to end, it's it's taking a very long time, a lot longer than it ever used to. Right, so you would you know, think, oh, yeah, wow, this is no big deal. And then they're like, hey, we can't get this part for however long. Yeah. And now you're stuck. I have, you know, people that have been like, oh, my car has been there for two weeks and it hasn't even been looked at yet. Right. You know, it's because they just can't get the parts. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. So, Sam, you're getting um, all of these kinds of calls. And what are some of the ways that we're we're trying to help our customers? Because, you know, overall, that's what this podcast is really about, is trying to figure out ways to help people avoid things that are going to make their rates go up. They're, they're, I shouldn't say that because their rates are going to go up. They're going to I mean, go up regardless, but we can try to mitigate that as best we can. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the, some of the easy things that we talk about as far as how to do that. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, one of the biggest things is going to be bundling your insurance. You hear it everywhere, everywhere, just, you know, bundle your, your auto in your home. Um, not only are you getting a discount, but you're also having everything under the same roof. So if you have a question about your auto, you can call me. If you have a question about your home, you can still call me. Right. As right. opposed to calling somebody else. So that's going to be a big way. A lot of companies prefer that you write your home and your auto with them. Um, you know, we can certainly look over your deductibles. Having a higher deductible may be beneficial. You know, if you're able to pay that money out of pocket at the time of a loss, you do get a, a benefit of having a lower premium for a higher deductible. So right. if you can set aside some money, keep a fund, you know, just for that, then that's a great way to save some money. Right. Um, you know, being safe and loyal. So obviously driving safe, you know, not being silly, speeding, all that <laughs> stuff, <laughs> you know. Being a good driver. <laughs> being a good driver, but also being Pay loyal. Pay attention. Don't eat Absolutely. your breakfast while you're driving. Absolutely. But also being loyal to the insurance companies. A lot of companies will have, um, you know, like a loyalty discount if you stay with them. So so, so when you say, lo yeah, so I was just going to ask, what do you mean loyal? So, uh, hey, I stayed with them a year. Isn't that loyal? <laughs> Unfortunately, they are looking for a little bit longer. You know, if you're if you're jumping from company to company year to year, it doesn't look great. You know, there is uh, it is something that's looked at on the back end how yep. how long you've been with a company. We yep. do have to input that information on a new policy. So, if you you know staying with a company for five plus years, you yep. you do see that there is a discount that is yeah. applied. To yeah, them. and there's other things you you can kind of earn, if you will, mm -hmm. um, if you don't have claims for that amount of time and and things yeah. like that. So big thing um, that I, I definitely recommend between uh, there's two really two endorsements. There's accident forgiveness, which is going to help you a ton if you have your first at fall accident. You know, it's going to help you save on the uh, fees, that, the surcharges that you get. Yeah. Um, disappearing deductibles is another one that will build up over time. It's usually give or take a hundred dollars a year that'll build up. Every company is a little different. Um, you know, sometimes maximum of five hundred. Again, it depends on on the company, but. Basically, those those savings can be used towards your um, your deductibles if you're in an accident. So it helps you again pay less money out of pocket, but you're still getting those higher deductibles, and you're still getting you know that that premium cut as well for having that higher yeah. deductible. Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. So um, let's talk about uh, remarketing. So you know, a lot of people you get you get the call and they're like, hey. Um, you know, my rates went up crazy. And the first thing they're always like is, why did my rates go up? And no one else, my friend's rates went down. And that's not the case anymore, <laughs> I can promise you. So let's talk about remarketing because one of the things I think people, they don't realize is they have their insurance here, they have it with Arbello. And so when the when the rate increase comes through and they're like, oh my God, I, you know, my rates are, my, my rates are crazy. I want to, I want to, yeah, I want to have you look at, I want, I'm going to have this quoted with other people. And our answer should be always what? So the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to review your policy first. And again, we're, we're just talking auto at the moment. Yes, your, your auto. So we're going to look at your policy first. We're going to talk about all those things, any potential discounts, any deductible changes, any coverage changes, anything like that we're going to look at first. The reason that we do that is because if you are changing companies, there sometimes you do lose certain, again, certain credits like loyalty credits. You may also lose those things like your, your saved up deductible dividends. So if you've been with Arbella for five years and you have the full $500 and now we switch you to a new company, you're going to lose that, that $500 credit because it doesn't transfer from company to company. Right. So 
you know, you'd have to to start all over again and work right. up. So we're we're trying our best to give you the best possible premium, the best possible coverage, not, you know, not have you lose any coverage right. if you can help it. Right. But again, we and and we have eight, nine, ten different carriers. Right. So, so after we do all that, if you know, if we can't make it work, we look at our other carriers. We can, yep. you know, try to remarket it with somebody else who again can offer the same, if not better, coverage. Make sure that you're not losing anything, but still try to get you a better premium. Right, exactly. So let's talk about some things that people don't, you know, they just don't kind of realize, but getting your car inspected. So there are lots of things that that hurt you as far as rate. And one of those is your your driving record. And, and there's other things like if you don't get your car inspected and you get a ticket. <laughs> um, it sounds kind of silly, but it does. It does, but it actually does impact you. Um, if they do issue you a ticket, that can, uh, if you have a perfect driving record, that can change you from yep. having, you know, six plus years of clean driving history being what's called 99. Um, you know, for your, for your points on your license. And then you could all of a sudden go down, drop down to a zero. What that means is that you won't have any surcharge added to your policy, but you will no longer get the good driver discount either. Right. And so um, some things to avoid, I'm looking at my notes here. So there's like this weird hesitation. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So what happens, uh, you know, one of the other things that, you know, nobody is comfortable talking about is paying your bills. (laughs) Everyone has bills. Everyone has, you know, they, they, everyone Everyone has a bad day every once in a while or a bad yeah. month where, where they can't make a bill payment. In the old days, that wasn't really a big, it was a big deal. Don't get me wrong. Um, but now it, it's become a lot harder. Yeah. So a lot of the companies are looking at how, even if your policy doesn't cancel for non-payment, they're looking at how many times you enter non-payment okay. status. So enter non-payment, I got my bill, I just didn't pay it Correct. on the fourth. Usually they'll have a bit of a grace period, you know, okay. again, depending on the company, it can it can vary. But if you don't pay your bill by that grace period and they have to issue a notice of cancellation. So then at that point, you usually have give or take 20 days or so, it, again, varies by carrier. Um, you know, if you don't make that payment and then it cancels for non-payment at the end. So even if you just enter that phase where, you know, you still make the payment on time before it completely cancels, but you did enter it, that is something that they're looking at. Um, yeah. And, and so let's tell, let's talk about, all right. So let's say I do go into cancellation. Let's say it canceled and I didn't, I just, you know, it was bad for whatever the reason was, everyone has, you know, things come up. And they don't pay the bill. So now, uh, you know, a month or two goes by. Uh, not only am I going to get in trouble if I get pulled over because I don't have insurance. Yeah. And they could they could tow my car. Yeah. They could give me another ticket, yeah. which is going to add to the snowball effect of, of the issues that you're going to have. But let's just say I uh, parked the car, didn't get a ticket, didn't have any issues, but now I want to get the car back on the road. I want to re-register it and get it insured. What happens now? What what are what are we seeing? Yeah. So so if you know, we will try to reinstate the policy if we can with the company. Um, but again, well, if, let's say it's past that. Yeah. But if that, we're if yeah. we're past that, then it really what happens is you end up having to pay the policy, the new policy in full um, first off, which is tough. You know, that's a lot of money down. And then the next part is that we are very, very limited on who we can write with. Uh, Typically, it's only one option, which is like a forced place uh, policy through a company called MAPE. And then they will, you know, force place your insurance because obviously it's required in Massachusetts, but it ends up being a lot more expensive because it's not a voluntary market. Yeah. and And I think even if you're a good driver, even if you're a good driver and you've had this situation come up. You're still going to be paying a lot more. Oh, absolutely. And again, our carry it's it's an underwriting thing. People don't realize, people just assume that, well, every carrier wants to write insurance. So why wouldn't they why wouldn't they all just give me a number? No. I mean, yeah. we literally have nine carriers that could all I mean, it's a question if you're in if you've been canceled for not pay within a certain amount of time, it's within a year, any amount of time, actually. Um well, I shouldn't say that. But. It will, so typically it'll be within uh, the previous two years. So even if you come to us from another agency, we have ways to to find that information. If it's within the last two years, you still do have to pay it in full. So, yeah. um, you know, that doesn't just go away. No, really. no. Uh, and so, uh, so again, uh, our, the, the point is to try and 
try and not hurt yourself uh, by getting the bills paid and trying to do all the things as far as keeping your car safe, keeping your car inspected and, and, and doing the best, you, you know, and again, call us. I think that's another thing people don't realize they can call us. You know, we, we ask us those questions. Ask us those questions. What, like, what should they do? Hey, listen, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make the full payment this, this month or whatever the case may be. I mean, we may not be able to give you the right, the answer you want to hear, but at least we can, we can try and work with you and work with the carrier somehow, way, yeah. shape or form. And so, the, the last piece I wanted to say to that too is uh, another big thing people don't think about is keeping your registration and your license active. Uh, so, you know, every couple of years you have to renew both. If if you're not doing that, you just forget or you didn't get the notice in the mail. Yeah. Uh, that, that sometimes the cust- the carriers will non-renew a policy. They will they will say, we don't want to write this policy anymore because you don't have an active license or registration. Right. So right. that's a really easy way to not have that happen. Just make sure you stay on top of that. Yeah. And and, and to, to go on to, you know, another subject as far as discounts and how to save, I think maybe you already talked about that we have a bunch of different carriers. Uh, or I shouldn't say a bunch, but we have a few carriers that that offer you know discounts if you make donations and things like that, right? Yeah. Yep. So uh, charitable donations. Uh, the different companies have different charities that they donate to. You can call us and ask about it, and they'll they'll give you a discount on the policy, which is nice. That is good. So uh, that's the auto side of things, um, and the same can be said as far as the rates on the homeowner side. I mean, we're 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 seeing those <laughs> and. We're seeing that as well. Oh, absolutely. And the and the carriers are getting more and more picky. We talk about underwriting. We talked about it a little bit about on the auto side of things, but on the homeowner side of things, it's it's interesting. Yeah, it's I would argue almost a little bit worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And so I'm not gonna go into all the details as far as, you know, why the rates have gone up. It's it's basically all it's the same similar. thing. It's very yeah. similar to to what's going on there. The only, you know, the big thing is there's a lot of storms coming through, you know, all of these storms and it's, it doesn't matter if we're having a bright sunny day, California is getting, you know, hammered right now with the storms, the mudslides, yeah. the rain and all that stuff. All of those things all throughout the country affect the rates everywhere everywhere. Yeah. everywhere. So that, that becomes an issue. The same thing with, um, in the, you know, as we talked about on the auto side is uh, getting people to get stuff done, getting materials. Those are still those are still lingering issues that are out yeah. there. And the rates or the cost for materials are, is definitely higher. The lack of trade, you know, Correct. lack of people able to help put the house together. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's the why the rates are going up. The rates, they're going to, they're just, you know, we're seeing those same, those same things as far as 10, 15, 20, 30% increases on the homeowner side of things. And one of the things that is getting interesting is carriers in the past, we would write. So when we write a policy, one of the things we do is we have a whole questionnaire. We go through this whole questionnaire asking you all kinds of questions about your house, your yard, what it looks like, what's what. We then send somebody out there to take a picture of the house. We generally do that to, to uh, so that we know what we're insuring. The other part, the other reason we're doing it is that we know what the carrier wants the house to look like. They they want to know that they're insuring a house that looks uh, that that is in good shape. Yeah, you know, that's that, not falling down not or falling debris down, in the yard or stuff in the yard. Trees overhanging, uh, trees overhanging, uh, gutters falling off, mold on the side of the house, mold on the roof. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> um, it, it, it's a lot of those things. And the carrier, so we do a quick kind of visual inspection of the outside of the house. Then the carriers, once we write the policy, they come in and they do a little more deep dive into that. Correct. They're looking around and they're actually coming in your house. Uh, and they they're being pretty particular yeah they're, they're being pretty particular so if it, you know some of the things i wanted to talk about here as far as the home is you know if you want us to requote it and you may have some situation in your yard or <laughs> situation on your house because the rates went up really high and again the rates are going up pretty high no matter where you are yeah uh and we'll be able to tell you, we meaning we, you, can pretty much tell somebody, hey, listen, your rate is this with this company right now, and it's high. If we had you with this other company, it'd be higher. Yeah. If we had you with company C, it may be a little bit lower, like, I don't know, 
50 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever the case may be. Right. However, when they come to your house <laughs> and see that you haven't painted in 12, 15, 20 years and there's paint chipping off everywhere, it's going to cost you a lot more to get that paint put up there right. than it is that staying with the carrier that you have. Yeah. And we don't we do not do that just to be like, oh, we don't want to do this. We don't want to move you. But it's it's really more so a protection for you guys, the customer. Uh, so that way, you know, you're not opening up that can of worms and, and having to pay way more money than you are in savings. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, some of the highlights as far as uh, what you can do to, you know, save money on your home. So and again, we we kind of touched, but I, I mean, they are literally, I, I'm, I'm kind of going on and on about this, but, but the underwriters are getting, they're getting pretty particular. Yeah. The same thing with your homeowner's policy as with your uh, auto policy. If you don't pay the bill and you're canceled for not pay. They're going to look at that. Yeah, we're going to have a sim- very similar situation. You know, again, we have one company that we can write it with. It's a, uh, you know, non-standard market. So it's going to be more expensive. Yeah. And it's, it, yeah. that's everybody looks at it. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I'm just uh, looking through here. Let's see. We talked about paying your bill. And f- so some of the ways that you can, you can save a little bit. Let, let's just kind of run through this real quick, Sam. Um, I'll let you kind of go through this the bo- the bundling obviously yeah it's going to be pretty similar with the auto so obviously bundling um looking at your deductibles again if you can afford that higher deductible a lot of times they will give you a pretty decent discount and another piece to that is that you know with the the homeowners insurance especially you don't want to be filing a very minimal claim for you know to get a hundred dollar payout that's going to hurt you in the long run if right. you're filing a bunch of those right Really, it's 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 not a maintenance policy. It's meant to be a catastrophic policy. That is a huge statement right there, <laughs> and uh, I'm glad you said that because yeah. a lot of folks, you know, it's it stinks. It really stinks when you when you have a situation in your house that you are like, oh, my insurance should cover this. I known that that roof was leaking for the past three and a half, four years, and right. we just kind of ignored it. We knew it was leaking and now it's now it's an issue. Or I knew that roof needed to be repaired. So can you replace my roof? It's we're not a maintenance. Yeah. It's not a maintenance product. Yeah. Product. And That's a lot of like, times wear and tear isn't covered. Wear and so, tear. I was know? just gonna say same thing on your auto policy. Yeah. Hey, my tires are are low. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're they're no tread. So yeah. it would be like you saying that the insurance policy is covering your your bald tires. Yeah. That's not how it works. No, unfortunately. <laughs> no, no, exactly. Um, but yeah, so you know, looking at deductibles, um, Making sure, uh, again, obviously paying the bill and sometimes so either paying it in full or if you put it on EFT. Um, so that that will at least help with one, making sure that the payment is made. Right. And and you don't have to remember every month to pay it. The other thing, too, is that you'll you'll save on billing fees. So some of the carriers, right. especially if you're mailing out a bill, they don't necessarily want to do that. So they they do charge some pretty high, uh, you know, in, installment fees. Yep. And usually on EFT, there there will be no fee or it'll be significantly less. So that's that's usually the way, uh, you know, we prefer to do it if you're going to do monthly or just pay it in full and be done with it. Yeah, the pay in full discount is also a it's it's a few bucks. I so mean, on your auto, it will be uh, home doesn't always offer a okay. paid in full discount. OK, but uh, yeah, with your auto, it, it typically will save quite a bit. So, again, you could just give us a call and your account manager can certainly go over that with you. Yeah. And, and so. Just to touch back on the inspection. So we do that inspection. We come through and we check on the house. We make sure everything's good before we write it. And, and as I said, the one of the reasons we do that is because we don't want we don't want there to be trouble for you. So if I write your policy today and I don't go look at your house and I don't ask questions or you lie yeah. <laughs> and you tell me, oh, the house is wonderful. <laughs> I've never had a claim. I've never had an issue. And then what happens is we're going to go look. So we're going to, we're going to find out when we get there that half the siding is missing from the house or whatever the the case may be. If the carrier goes out and finds these issues, they're going to come back and say, Hey, this is the issue. And you're going to have a certain amount of time to get that done. And then they're going to cancel the policy and you're going to have to start all over again. Yeah. And a lot of times too, it will be, um, if it's a new business that we're writing, which typically these are, they their cancellation is a lot quicker than if it's just you know you've had you've been with the carrier for a couple of years they do an inspection which will happen too you will hear that they do an inspection every once in a while just kind of randomly not prompted by moving the policy or or right. anything like that 
Um, and that's, again, just to make sure that your their underwriting standards are being met. Yeah. Um, but so, you know, it's, it will be pretty quick. And, you know, most people aren't going to be able to replace a roof in no. 10 days. You no, know? So no, it's exactly. Just, so it's it better makes to sense be, for us to do it that yeah, way. Yeah, straightforward and honest with us before before any of that comes to, you know, because it's going to cost you a lot more money in the long run because you're going to have to come up with a new down payment. You're going to have to come up with. And if you get canceled for you know, that's another issue. Forget about not yeah. paying your bill and getting canceled for not pay. Getting canceled because of an issue can be an issue. <laughs> can be an issue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's crazy. So it's a lot, it's a lot going, there's a lot going on. Yeah. There's definitely a lot going on. But of course, if there's any questions, we're always here to to help answer those. Exactly. And I think, again, the, the personal lines account managers, they all know their stuff and, and they, they're more than willing to talk to you. You know, we have, you can email us at anytime and you can give us a call uh, and somebody will get back to you. We'd rather answer your questions now than have you have a situation where you're stuck. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So this, that wasn't, that wasn't so bad now, was it? It wasn't the worst. It was not. <laughs> so, um, so that's that, that's going to be a wrap for this episode. Uh, we hope we made it fun and informative and please take a minute to subscribe to the podcast, share it with anyone you think would benefit from listening. And remember, if you are looking for insurance here in Massachusetts for your home, auto, or commercial operation, you can find us at insuringyourway.com and, of course, on any of our social media platforms like Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Do you think we should do TikTok? Oh, I'm not doing that. Oh, come on. It'll be fun. I kind of want to see you do a silly uh, little dance, yeah. though. I drink coffee on TikTok. <laughs> That's about all I got so far. Anyways, thank you for listening. Thank you, Sam, for coming in today and yeah. joining me. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. And that is that. Thanks for listening to the Fink and Paris Insurance Podcast. Local and mighty. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.